Welcome to IDT Talks. I'm Anastasia Laurina, and today we have our special guest, member of Azerbaijani Parliament, Erkin Gaderli. Hello and welcome to our program. Hello, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you so much for finding the time to join our program today. My pleasure. We have a very, very interesting topic for discussion, and I hope you will provide simple but very concrete and precise answers to our question. As you probably know, on March 24, the Constitutional Court of Armenia ruled that Armenia's accession to the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court is in line with the fundamental law of the country. They were thinking about this decision for many years, and finally yeah. they decided to, to, to ratify this. Why do you think Armenia decided to do it right now? There are several explanations for that, um, and all of them are political. And because joining a treaty is a political decision. It has legal consequences, but the decision itself is political. Armenia, um, just like us, also took part in the uh, UN diplomatic conference on the establishment of the International Criminal Court in 1998. And I remember everything about that because I was myself a member of the Azerbaijani delegation at that time. Um, Armenia signed uh, the treaty, but didn't rec uh, did not ratify it. And it took uh, several years for them uh, to come to this decision because Back then, the Constitutional Court uh, decided that the uh, ICC uh, statute uh, contradicts uh, the Constitution of Armenia. Now, uh, they changed their opinion, even though the Constitution hasn't changed. It's still the same Constitution. Now, this indicates that there is a change in the political will of Armenia. So what's on the agenda um, now? They may, there might be several explanations for that. Let's start with the simple ones. Um, the European Union pushes uh, countries all over the world, especially those who seek cooperation with the European Union uh, with a view to becoming a, a strategic partner or member of the EU, to ratify, to join uh, the, the Rome Statute of the ICC. They also sent several times uh, such kind of messages to Azerbaijan leadership as well. And of course, it is for each country to decide whether they want to be a, a member of an international treaty or not. Um, among the former Soviet Union countries, uh, in our region, only Georgia uh, signed and ratified. Armenia signed but didn't ratify, we neither signed nor ratified. So we have these uh, differences in our attitudes and approaches towards the ICC. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, Armenia, and especially uh, today's uh, uh, government of Armenia, they were kind of trying to maneuver themselves uh, in the region uh, after they, they lost the war. Uh, and you know that they uh, keep claiming that Azerbaijan uh, violated territorial integrity of Armenia. And they, they do it shamelessly. Um, <clears throat> and they have in mind that by uh, joining the ICC statute, there might be an opportunity for them to uh, launch a complaint with the ICC against what they call uh, aggression of Azerbaijan or some uh, war crimes, as they call it. But if I'm um, not mistaken, they refer to, to, to the year 2021. Yes. Since um, that and the problem is that, uh, the, the legal problem for them, is that uh, that statute cannot be applied retroactively. First of all, the statute of ICC itself clearly indicates that uh, the International Criminal Court has jurisdiction over crimes committed after uh, the entry into force of the ICC statute. That happened in 2001. So since then, ICC has jurisdiction. But uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, but for each individual country which joins uh, the statute, that term begins from the very date of entering into force of the ratification document. 
So that means that I don't know if Armenia ever decides to to to, to ratify, because this is only a constitutional uh, opinion, the, the opinion of the constitutional court. It's not a yet a ratification document. So if the parliament decides to ratify, and then they will submit the ratification uh, document uh, to the ICC. Uh, ICC will have jurisdiction over crimes committed on the territory of Armenia. Mm -hmm. Since that day. So uh, that means that even if we assume that the Armenian government is serious about uh, uh, their allegations uh, with regard to Azerbaijani military uh, operations. Legally, they will not be able to do anything with, regard, with that. And uh, so for us, it, doesn't, it will not change anything because the ICC has jurisdiction over temporal, temporal jurisdiction. I already explained how it works. Then ICC has jurisdiction over crimes committed on the territory of member states. So which means that only on the territory of Armenia in this case, but also over crimes committed by the citizens of uh, the, uh, the member states. So if Armenians are really serious about uh, what they say with regard to ICC, then it means that they can potentially uh, investigate crimes committed by their own citizens on the territory of Azerbaijan. Those war crimes and that their soldiers committed. They can do it anytime, actually. It's within their own jurisdiction, but they don't do it. Uh, for example, they, 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 they uh, arrested Kocharyan um, and they charged him with corruption. However, they could have charged him with war crimes and crimes against humanity committed on the territory of, Ar of Azerbaijan. Because, the, because those, crimes, those crimes uh, has no temporal limitations. And you can apply it retroactively on their own within the jurisdiction of their own courts. But do you think that they may decide to apply such kind of states against no, him? No, of course not. Of course, it's not, not in their interest. Uh, it's 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 what they do is 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 very. Uh, it's a kind of a political uh, tricks. Let me come. They back. do it for for perhaps for some image, or for, or perhaps even in the context of the warrant of arrest arrest warrant issued by the. Uh, ICC with regard to uh, President of Russia. It, yeah, it, it seems very, very much like uh, it seems very much like Armenia is trying to somehow, um, I would they say, blackmail Russia. But uh, we already can see some statements made yes, by, yes, by Russian course, side and against and Armenia. Side, they, they, so they were trying to do something against Azerbaijan, but in return they, they received negative they, outcome they from Russia. They say that they are trying to do something against Azerbaijan, but what they really mean is that they kind of blackmailing Russia because with regard to Azerbaijan, they won't, won't be able to do anything. I just tried to explain um, why, because okay, temporal jurisdiction, territorial jurisdiction, jurisdiction ratione persone as the, the Latin phrase goes, those limitations will not allow Armenia to do anything with regard to Azerbaijan. They can do whatever they want on their own territory with their own citizens, but uh, claiming that they can do, they can sue Azerbaijan, they can launch a complaint against Azerbaijan with the International Criminal Court, they are simply lying to their own population and create wrong expectations. How do you, how can you explain the future uh, relations between Armenia and Russia in this particular case? Should we expect any specific messages from Russian side? And the key question, which has already been published in many media sources, if Vladimir Putin decides to come to Armenia, how Armenia will behave after this ratification? Well, <clears throat> we already see the reaction from the Russian side. But no uh, clear answer from Armenian side. The, yes, of course. What, what, what can they say? Um, to imagine, it, it's even hard to imagine how they can arrest the president of Russia. Um, <laughs> first of all, I don't expect president of Russia to travel to Armenia anytime soon. Um, but even if, 
he goes there. How can it technically happen? He will travel with his own security. Um, are we ready to imagine that Armenian law enforcement bodies will clash or <laughs> fight with the, the, the security service uh, of Russia? No, it, it, it's technically even hard to imagine. And uh, <clears throat> but, uh, really, I mean, seriously, I mean, uh, I, I don't want to even guess what Armenian government is going to achieve with that. Um, because the, the, <laughs> this, the, this context of uh, um, arrest warrant issued by the ICC and the immediate action of Armenian side, um, it, it, it clearly for me means that they want simply to blackmail Russia to uh, to send messages to to European countries to to the, to the West to some of the countries like France for example and and countries who are pushing for this um, with a view to achieving some favors from Russian side but this was a very stupid move I would say. So because Armenia will get nothing for that. Absolutely nothing. I mean, they can get uh, some negative outcomes. Um, but coming back to the first part of your answer, uh, you say it about the influence from outside, as you yes. as you rightly mentioned, France, French government, and the position of Armenian state to 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 get some friends in the Western world, for example. So can we say that in this particular case, in this question, someone outside, a close ally of Armenian state, decided to use Armenia in its own interests? Against Russia, probably. Well, not only uh, it, it, you know, it's our region is, is is very complex, and many in the West uh, do not understand it. Uh, they take for granted our geography, our neighborhood, and our cultures, and many of them uh, don't have a, even a clue of the uh, composition of the interest in our region. They, uh, <clears throat> for a long time, uh, regarded Georgia, for example, as a leader of democratic reforms. But then out of a sudden, they refused to grant Georgia a candidate status, which created a frustration in Georgia. And um, then, they, for example, uh, this war in Ukraine especially uh, also clearly shows how inconsistent uh, many countries in the West are, especially, for example, France, the same, that same France, uh, Germany to a certain extent. Um, and it's not just about the initial reluctance to support Ukraine. It's just about uh, the misconceptions of the entire region and the complexity of geopolitical interests. And now we see how France, for example, plays into the hands of Iran. Um, and the, the, the French parliament, uh, when it decided, um, when it adopted its resolution uh, against Azerbaijan, accusing Azerbaijan and calling for even military assistance to Armenia, uh, there were several of kind of resolutions yeah. passed by French and, and, and they don't even understand what they're doing. And I liked very much the response from the Israels. Right? Uh, that perhaps is very... Uh, um, <clears throat> it was perhaps unexpected response for French politicians. Because Israel told them, what are you doing actually? If you give uh, Armenia weapons, it can easily be transported to Iran, given the close ties between Armenia and Iran. And by using reverse engineering, Iran can uh, elaborate on its own technology using French weapons. To bypass the sanctions. To bypass the sanctions. So this is just very few uh, examples of how um, misconceptions, general misconceptions about our region uh, lead to wrong decision. Uh, from politicians in the West, at least in some countries. And uh, France, uh, in this particular case, is the most active one. 
which, as you said, and I fully agree, uh, uses Armenia for its own geopolitical games. But how it can and it seems like for Armenia? Armenia, itself. Armenia is, uh, uh, I wouldn't say happy, but at least uh, they agree to be used to be used by others. But you see what you are rightly mentioning today. Armenia is being used by France, by Iran by Russia yeah. sometimes, by the European Union that decided to set a so-called civil mission to, to, to the border with Azerbaijan. So many powers which among themselves also have different contradictory parts. Uh, today, Russia is thinking uh, about own interest in the yeah. South Caucasus. Definitely Iran and France has its own. Why the situation may be dangerous for Armenia itself when there are so many powers which do not unite the efforts, but trying to find all the national interests. It's dangerous for Armenia because, because none of those countries uh, really care about Armenia. And they so have no reason... So they just need they some have no weak state in the South Caucasus. The, uh, Armenia should, keep, should care about itself, first of all. And uh, they, 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 uh, Armenia should understand that the, uh, the true security for them, the real security for them, is peace with neighbors. Azerbaijan, first of all. And Turkey, good relations with these two countries is a key for future security of Armenia. Because you, you, you cannot uh, be secure when you live around enemies. And especially when it's not your neighbors which generate animosity. <laughs> it is you yourself which made your enemies, your, 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 your neighbors enemy or view them with those uh, from that perspective. So uh, <clears throat> Armenia is now simply, uh, I think, uh, th they really got confused. This shocking uh, loss, the, the, the shocking defeat in the war uh, created a lot of confusions in the mind of Armenian politicians. And so can we sum and up? Can they, we... They, they, they are now trying to, to choose a strategy uh, without a clue, without an understanding of what they really want to achieve. Just to sum up what we used to talk about today, this decision to, 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 to join the ICC uh, and the statements against Azerbaijani side to so-called uh, the, the, the activity of what Azerbaijan did how they like to say on the territory of Armenia, does it show that Armenian state is not interested in peace development in the region? They will try to use an additional way, have to um, just slow down the process of negotiations about the peace deal between two countries. Yes, as I said, uh, first of all, with regard to ICC, all the statements and arguments are simply baseless, groundless, from the purely legal point of view. And uh, I hope I could explain that. And uh, but um, with regard to peace, I can assume that Armenians do have some understanding of peace, but that's not the peace which Azerbaijan can agree on. Uh, and uh, they keep talking about peace, but they do nothing uh, to achieve that peace. That includes. Uh, uh, even the, 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 the commitments that Armenia undertook uh, uh, under the trilateral agreement, they keep blaming Azerbaijan for what they call blockade of Lachin Corridor. But Azerbaijan built a new road, a highway, 30 kilometers. They refused to use it. Um, they refused to open the commun transport communication between mainland Azerbaijan and Nakhchivan region, which is a clear undertake, uh, commitment undertook, which, which Armenia undertook. And they refuse to withdraw the remaining parts of uh, the troops uh, from the territory of Azerbaijan. Uh, they don't talk about this. And as long as this continues, peace cannot be achieved. So uh, it is ironic we won the war, and it is us who demand for peace. <laughs> this is real, this is rather ironic, but this is how it is. 
Yes, for sure. More than two years, Azerbaijani side offered to sign a peace deal with the five basic principles yes. of rain and those basic principles, but has not have not been invented by Azerbaijan. They have been existent in international law. It's not a, a wishful list uh, from Azerbaijan. Quite side. simple to it's, recognize the territorial integrity. Basic, this is the basic. It's basic underlying principles of, yeah. of international law. Unfortunately, there are some powers who are trying to use the situation in their own geopolitical forces, and Armenia yes. allows them to be used by uh, this perspective. So, uh, Mr. Gadrili, thank you so much for joining IDT Talk. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you.